Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 8, Non-Infectious Disease and Disorders. This is video 23. We're going to be looking at some of the technologies associated with visual disorders. Just as we did with the ear, we're going to be looking at some of the different types of technologies available to help to address and correct some different types of visual disorders, including spectacles and laser surgery. The idea is that you're able to describe some different forms of vision impairment to explain the functions of particular technologies that assist with these areas of vision impairment and then to evaluate the effectiveness of different types of strategies and technologies associated with the correction of vision. So from the video that we looked at previously when we were looking at the structure of the eye and some of those disorders associated with eye function, we looked uh, at two in particular, short-sighted and long-sightedness. So we want to try and refer to these by their uh, more correct names. So myopia is uh, what we use to describe short-sightedness and hyperopia uh, for long-sightedness. We talked about the fact that um, these two different types of um, visual disorders, if you like, are basically associated with uh, the inability to accommodate effectively. So it's this idea of accommodation where uh, the muscles in the eye are able to slightly change the shape of the lens in order to ensure that the focus uh, of any light that's coming into the eye uh, meets right at the retina. Now, for various reasons, sometimes to do with age, sometimes to do with the shape of the eyeball, or maybe some of the other uh, refractive properties of the cornea, for example, this may not be possible. And so, generally speaking, correction for these sorts of problems can be done with uh, some sort of an additional lens. If we're talking about myopia, then that means that we've got the focus in front of the retina. So we want to try and push the focus further back. So we use a, a concave lens, which is actually going to move the light out a little bit. It's going to refract it away. And so therefore, when it comes back in, it's going to bring it to a focus a little further back. And that's exactly what we want in order to correct something like myopia. For hopefully obvious reasons, if we are suffering from hyperopia, then that means that we're having trouble um, seeing nearer objects. We're better at long vision. And this means that the um, focus is actually too far back, effectively. And so what that means is that we need to bring the focus forward a little bit. So we're actually going to have to bring the light in. And so that means we need a con uh, convex lens, which is going to start to tail um, those uh, light rays in just a little bit um, in order to um, bring that focal point a little bit closer, so more in line with where the, the retina actually is. These two different types of visual disorders can be corrected with either um, spectacles or contact lenses, and sometimes they can also be um, influenced or corrected by uh, surgery. And we'll have a look at um, each of those in a little bit more detail later in this video. One of the other problems that we identified was cataracts, and cataracts are this um, clumping of proteins in the lens. So we've got to try and do something about that. Um, it, it leads to problems like blurred vision, um, fading of colours, poor night vision, and it's one of the things that can be treated with surgery. What we tend to do is insert a very small probe in through the cornea um, to use ultrasound waves to actually dissolve the lens so that we can then um, withdraw it, suck it out, and then an artificial lens will be inserted in its place. Um, this sort of surgery has had pretty um, high success rates, pretty uh, good solution to the problems of cataracts, particularly because cataracts, um, when they get quite bad, can um, severely restrict vision. And another area of uh, eye correction can be laser surgery. And, and laser surgery is becoming a little bit more common. Um, it basically involves cutting the um, 
cornea, so a little flap in the cornea, um, sculpting that cornea a little bit. So we know that the cornea being a curved surface is going to have an impact on the refraction of light coming into the eye. So by slightly changing that shape, you can slightly change the way that light enters the eye and therefore that may be sufficient um, to be able to correct problems um, like myopia and hyperopia. Um, so, so this is basically a, a six step um, overview of the process. So obviously some numbing drops, um, the opening of a flap, the sculpting with the laser, so the changing of the shape of the cornea in some way, and then basically um, that flap will be um, put back over and um, eventually um, the, the eye will heal and you'll have this um, slight, slightly changed uh, corneal surface um, as a result of this sort of surgery. Laser eye surgery has been applied to not just, um, I guess, what might be regarded as more simple issues such as myopia and hyperopia, but uh, also more complex things like um, presbyopia, which is often uh, needs uh, bifocals or multifocals for uh, correction. Um, and laser surgery has actually been uh, quite successful in some patients who suffer from presbyopia. So ultimately what we want you to be able to do is we want you to compare each of these and look at their efficacy or effectiveness as um, technologies associated with um, correcting vision problems. So um, one of the ways to do this is to use a comparison table where I've put each of the three um, types of correction methods at the top and um, down the side we've looked at advantages and disadvantages and, and you can look at similarities and differences lots of different ways of using comparison tables and they're a great tool um, I remember a student I had a couple of years ago who used tables a lot to answer his questions he was very concise uh, he was very precise with his answers and he did very well because it made him focus on exactly the things that he needed um, to remember and gave him a nice easy way of being able to share that information. So these sorts of comparison tables can be used in answer to your um, HSC questions just as they can uh, in general questions in class. Um, you might also like to add more detail or make it, uh, expand on some of these ideas a little because I've really just put them in as a bit of a checklist. Um, so let's quickly go through them. So for spectacles, um, obviously they're fairly easy to wear. There's so many different styles these days. A lot of them are made from plastic lenses rather than glass, which are much lighter, but are still very strong. They can be made anti-reflective or UV, UV responsive. So you can see some people who have glasses that will change um, if they go from inside to outside. Um, and also they can be customizable, particularly for people who maybe spend a lot of time in front of computers um, and want some glasses that can reduce that glare. They can be thick and heavy, particularly um, if the type of um, eye disorder that they're trying to correct is quite severe, then obviously you can see those real thick, almost Coke bottle um, lenses, which can be quite heavy too. Um, when moving from uh, very hot to very cold, so going inside to outside or just moving between environments where there are significant differences in temperature. Sometimes glasses can fog up, which can be a bit of a problem. And sometimes they can also be a bit impractical when you're sort of sitting them, putting them down, picking them up when you're using them for different purposes um, as well. Contact lenses don't fog. Um, they're a little bit more convenient in terms of you don't have to remember your glasses cases and all of those sorts of things. And they only provide very minor changes in image size. Now sometimes too when you wear glasses, the sideways views can be a little bit disruptive. Glasses can be very difficult to be perfectly homogeneous so that um, no matter which direction you're looking in, you're seeing uh, exactly the same view. Uh, Contact lenses are much better in that way and in terms of that sort of sideways vision. But um, some people can have challenges putting them in. Um, there can also be problems if there uh, isn't enough oxygen getting to the eyeball. So um, oxygen permeability is a very important component to contact lenses. Some people take a while to adjust to using contact lenses. They are very, diff very different and they require a lot more maintenance. You can give your glasses a bit of a wipe every now and again to keep them clean. That's, um, it's not as simple as that for contact lenses. And obviously if you don't keep your contact lenses clean, you're putting them on your eye surface. That can lead to things like infections. 
Also for people who maybe have uh, multiple vision challenges, such as with presbyopia, um, accommodation can be a little bit difficult, at least again, in getting used to um, those adjustments for near vision, far vision, those sorts of things. Uh, and then surgery. So surgery, often um, when surgery is successful, you don't need glasses or contacts after the surgery. So it can be a sort of correction mechanism that without all of those other um, annoyances, I guess, that you might have to look at. Most surgeries now are, are very efficient and very low risk. Um, but sometimes the types of surgery may be age dependent. So um, you might need for your eyeballs to have um, completely grown. So you might, uh, there might be certain procedures, certain laser procedures that are not suitable for children, for example, uh, who haven't reached their full uh, growth yet. Like any surgery, it's an invasive procedure. And so all surgeries have some associated risks with them. And, and dry eyes is one of the almost um, constant consequences of laser surgery, sometimes for short periods of time, sometimes for, for many weeks to months. And surgery can be less than 100% effective. So it may not correct all of the problems and it may still result in um, needing to use glasses or contacts afterwards. So this is a very quick overview of the different types of technologies associated with correcting vision. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to expand on each of these, give some nice examples, um, link them into the specific disorders associated with each of these types of technologies um, and continue to build that knowledge base that you have um, for this module 8 topic. Thanks for watching.